representing the Auckland University of Technology and the University of Auckland. Very nice. Now, for your benefit, I'd like to introduce you your judges, very distinguished judges. Um, we have, you should know, Rob Miles, the software design captain and uh, professor from the University of Hull. Nanette Cutliffe, from, who's the CIO of uh, Pub Pacific Services, United Credit Union. Richard Ferris, who's the, I like it, global VC. Um, Ferris, sorry, I keep doing that. I'm thinking Ferris Bueller's day off. It's kind of cool, right? Not as cool as your job, which is the global developer relations for, for Nokia. David Rowe, who's investment manager for Uniseed. Uh, Guy Wallat, who's the CTO of Coca-Cola. Biataha Brachinska, who is the president of the... You're going to correct me, please do. Biata. Biata. Thank you, the president of the Institute of Industrial Design of Warsaw. And Guillaume. Belmas, who is the Software Solutions Manager of VNext. And with that, I'd like to hand over, good luck, to Team Mobile Eye. Hi, my name is Jade, and I'm from Team Mobile Eye. As you can see, I've placed in front of each judge a blindfold. Now I'm going to ask you to do something that may make you feel uncomfortable, but please take a moment and come with me on this journey. I'd like you please pick that blindfold up, remove your specs if you have one, and put the blindfold on. And for the rest of the crowd, you can please close your eyes. Take your time. Now, imagine for the rest of your life, in darkness. How does that make you feel? Think back of how you got here to this chair. All the things that you saw. In the one moment when you put that blindfold on, it's all gone. Simple things like what you just had for breakfast or the faces of the people you just met. All the things you just took for granted. Gone. How are you going to go through the rest of your life? You can take the blindfold off now and you can open your eyes now. How did that feel for you? Do you have any family, loved ones, friends, connections, or experience with someone who is blind or may go blind? <coughs> Let me tell you about blindness. 40 million people in the world are blind. And that number is projected to grow by 66% by 2020. Every five seconds, one person in the world goes blind. Every five seconds. Now, it isn't about being born completely blind, but there's a large scale of people out there deteriorating in sight. Globally, there are 315 million people visually impaired. How? Diabetes, cataracts, stroke, old age, accidents. So the likelihood is it can happen to your mother. It can happen to your friends. It can happen to you. Blindness. It not only touches a large number of people and their friends and families, it also touches each individual in a big way. This is a big problem we can ignore. Here are two cans. 
one tuna, one cat food. Which would you pick if you're hungry? Easy for you to choose, hard for a blind person. Imagine you're going to the mall, and these are all the things that you see on the aisle. You have the luxury of picking whatever you like. Now, this is what a blind person sees. Nothing. You don't even know if these boxes are cornflakes, or cat food, or detergent. Imagine losing all this richness and information. Blind people, they're no different than you and I. They want to learn. They want to make a living. They want to raise a family. They even use mobile phones to stay in touch. This pervades across the DNA of everyday life. But the only difference is they can't see. Now, what if we can help blind people better discover the world around them? What if we can use the power of the mobile phone and give them the ability to see through the lenses of their own phone? What if I can discover the world with this? This is Mobile Eye. The idea is simple. You take a picture, send it to the cloud, and bing, you get an answer. You take a picture, and you get an answer. It is that simple. In fact, let me show you a live demo of Mobile Eye in action. Okay, so I've got a Windows Phone 7 here uh, with Mobile Eye application installed. And we've got two um, tins, one of cat food, one of tuna, as you can see on the document camera. So as a blind person, I want to find out which can is, is which when I'm hungry. So I'm just going to place that here. Swipe left for color recognition. Swipe up for darkness detection. Swipe right for helper. Swipe down for text reader. So mobile eye, um, very easy interface. Just swipe left, right, up, down to navigate through. Helper. And I swipe right, and I'll take a photo. Picture taken. Sending image. Waiting for response. All voice instructions, so you just follow it um, by hearing um, to it. No, no visually um, complicated uh, Fancy user interface. Fancy feast brand cat food on the left and home brand light tuna in olive oil on the right. Fancy feast brand cat food on the left and home brand light tuna in olive oil on the right. Helper. This is exactly <laughs> the richness in information and possibilities that our solution brings. Now let me tell you about a journey and how we got here. This is Akash, team leader and software engineer, Inhuan, software engineer, and myself, Jade, brand and graphic designer. We live in Auckland, New Zealand, a city where people and students from different parts of the world cross paths. And we met through our life's connection, this guy called Neil Jarvis. Now, Neil is blind. And he told us a bit of his experiences and how it felt like to be blind. For example, not knowing if the amount on his receipt is accurately charged. We never thought about that. And so out of our curiosity, we asked, Hey, can we help Neil? What can technology do? What if we can give him smart eyes with his smartphone and mobile phone? That's it. 
That's it. That's our idea. That's how we got started on this journey, and through Neil, we started to work closely with the Royal New Zealand Foundation of the Blind, working with their members and getting direct feedback from blind users helped us significantly with market validation. So our solution is available now. It's not a prototype, not just a concept. We actually had this app in the hands of our blind people, and they are using it in their daily lives to better connect with the world. Here's a little about what they have to say. What has not been possible is finding out more detail about the specifics of what's around you. Even down to shopping, I take a can out of the um, fridge or out of the, out of the pantry. I don't know whether it's baked beans or sweet corn or dog food. The potential that I see is huge because um, it's effectively harnessing the power of the mobile phone, of ordinary human beings who want to be able to help, and the technology that sits between those two things, in order that um, I can confidently uh, sit in a, uh, somewhere and know what's happening around me, or I can confidently know what's in the tin of food which I've just picked up from my cupboard but I don't know what it is, or I can confidently know um, what colour uh, jumper I'm wearing or what colour jumper my friend is wearing or something like that. Now that is information that I've never had before and never had any way to have. Having this uh, facility I think is fabulous and um, so the potential I think is liberating. I think it will give people more confidence, it will give people more, uh, more, more independence. It's great, it's extremely accurate. It's going to make for a huge improvement in the and the lifestyle of the blind. This, I think, will help enormously to, to uh, end the isolation that many people face. It's, it's, it's so good to have, to be able to work with a tool that, uh, that traditionally and historically, something to do with, with photos, was so just out of the league. And, you know, so I well, would like to see more colour description and all sorts. So it's really, it makes one just want to more, really. Yeah, I, I love my life. Thank you so much. As you can see, as you can see, we have real blind people using our app to solve real problems in their daily lives and how enthusiastic they are about it. Interestingly, if you look at some of the comments that they made, Even though they are blind and they can't see, they can see that the potential for this is huge. Now, I'm sure some of you would like to know how this all works and how do we get our magic. Let's get under the hood. The first part of our architecture starts with the end user holding the mobile phone. I take a picture and send it to our server. While working with blind people, we found out that in many scenarios, they just want to find out about color or text. For that, we use artificial intelligence or AI to provide answers, such as color identification. That's how I can easily pick something up while shopping, swipe left, and know what color it is. For text, we use Optical Character Recognition, or OCR. It recognizes text from an image and sends, speaks it out to our user. For example, you're buying a person a greeting card. Happy birthday or get well soon? Big difference. But what if you take a picture that AI can recognize? For that, we leverage on the power of the connected world. Blind people have friends and families too, just like you and I. And now we all know that there's a whole bunch of people on Facebook all the time. It is, after all, the largest country in the world. 
With the integration of Facebook, we can send a mobile eye request asking, what is this? And if your friends and families are online, they can quickly type in an answer and send it back to you. This effectively connects the blind person with the wider community. For our friends on Facebook, a status update notifies all of their friends that they've achieved the Helpful Hands Award for helping 10 blind people this week, or the Good Samaritan Award for helping 50 blind people this week. Lastly, if you can't get a response from Facebook, we route the request to an existing commercial service called IQ Engines. It provides image descriptions at seven cents an image. For more technical information, our server operates on Microsoft ASP.NET and Windows Azure Cloud. Now, from what I've said earlier, we've seen that blindness is indeed a huge problem. But with every big problem, comes a big opportunity. Mobile Eye is a must-have app. You heard it from our users, how much value it is to them and how they love it. We are really excited about this because we have here an end-to-end -end solution with an architecture that's globally scalable. Now we have an addressable market size of not only 40 million blind people, but also the 315 million visually impaired. In the US alone, we have 1.3 million people legally blind. In Europe, 17.5 million. So in the developed world alone, we have a market size of 19 million people. So what value do we put on our solution? From our calculations and user feedback, we believe that the value proposition of Mobileye is at $5 per month. Counting our cents, our cost of running is very low. $3 per user per month, excluding data charges. So how many blind people are actually using mobile phones right now? That's 82% and they're age 18 and above. We believe that within two years, we can impact 4 million users. That's only 10% of our market share. At a price point of $5 per month, that's only $60 a year for our blind user. For us, it costs us $3 per month per user, so we see a gross margin of $2 per month against 4 million users, amounting to $8 million per month. And that translates into $96 million per year. Now, for a reality check, will data charges hinder this idea? Our app compresses images sent out to just a few kilobytes, and based on trials with blind users and calculations, it only costs one cent per image sent over 3G. Are there any competition? We've done our research and found a project from the University of Rochester in New York called VisWiz, exploring similar directions as ours, but they offer limited functions and only works on iPhone. So how do we get to 4 million users in two years? First, building alliances and networks. We want to reach out to the various foundations of the blinds across the world for endorsement and access to blind people. In return, we're going to offer them a $1 donation for every subscription marketed and sold. First 1,000 users are awarded with a free subscription for a year. Also, the gamification of mobile eye on Facebook and social medias can act as an advertising outlet. Next, we want to further develop mobile eye to incorporate and utilize multi-sensory data from smartphones such as GPS and Bing Maps. So in summary, I've showed you that blindness is a huge problem. And for each person, blindness impacts them in a big way. 
I've shown you that we have got here a smart and elegant solution. We have feedback from our users and how enthusiastic they are about it. And we have an architecture that's globally scalable. And we have a significant business opportunity in front of us. And we've laid down actions to how we can realize this opportunity. So blind people, when they go out, two things, a stick and mobile eye. In the analog age, this is a tool that every blind person cannot live without. But in the digital age, mobile eye is a tool that every blind person needs. As a close, I'm going to ask you to keep the blindfolds. Because as you're judging in this competition, and when you need some quiet space, put the blindfold back on and think about how did that make you feel? How mobile eye can make an impact. How mobile eye can help blind people better discover the world. Help us make this a reality. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Great solution. And it's also uh, very impressive that you're now the last people representing the Southern Hemisphere from New Zealand. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name's David, I'm from uh, Uniseed, so I'm, I'm really interested in um, the, the commercial potential of the technology. So you represent a solution that you know, you've already mocked up and it's gone live. How will you protect that solution and prevent other people from just copying it and stealing your $96 million? So we believe that there's I IP potential for our technology and we have been documenting and recording all our process and discoveries. And we are actually, we started out by focusing our attention on getting what the blind people need and creating a solution that fully addresses their need. So that's market validation that we really want to achieve. The next step would be consultations with our lawyers from New Zealand on how to execute our IP strategies. So that's definitely in the plan. Um, the, can, can you talk a little bit about this link between, you know, using and leveraging human intelligence and then the artificial intelligence that you would, you would have in the background as you build up the database? Sure. So in what specific details, sorry? Yeah. So what, h how would those be linked and, and how would you leverage human intelligence to accelerate the learning and accuracy of the artificial intelligence engine? Sure. Um, so, as many of you would know that um, artificial intelligence, when it, when it comes to identifying objects, um, it's possible um, for, for example, recognizing um, a, a label on, on, say, a bottle of Coca-Cola. But when you want to get the details, the context-specific details, it's, it becomes very difficult. And in our scenario, the complexity grows um, very dramatically because you can, take, you can be taking picture of anything. Um, so we route the images of such kind um, to humans for them to answer. That's where we leverage the crowdsourcing technology and human intelligence. Um, what happens in many scenarios while talking to blind people, we realize that they want to find out the color um, of an object or colors of the jumper they are wearing, as we saw in the video. Um, in such scenarios, artificial intelligence can work really well. Um, in those scenarios, the image would be routed to the artificial agents. Um, however, to define um, where, where the image goes, currently we just have um, the user decide. So we give, them, give the user the options of swiping left for color detection, for example, and swiping right for, for it to go um, to, the human, uh, to the human intelligence. One of the reasons for that um, is that um, when a human person, a person is not available to answer, what do we do? So we use the third party crowdsourcing services um, which cost us as well a few cents per image. And so we want the user to decide if, if they want to um, do that or not so that we can um, 
We can log that and charge them accordingly. Um, the benefit that artificial intelligence uh, gives us is also to reduce the human workers required for answering the questions that computer can answer. Um, so it's really efficiently using the time of, of the humans who are trying to help blind people. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I uh, like the idea to involve all these people from Facebook into your concept. Congratulations. Uh, do you think about other scenarios for your solution, not only for the, with the blind people? Do you have any other? In two, two main scenarios where this application be used, um, one is when you want to find out what this is, uh, and that actually works really well when you are traveling in, diff in other countries. Um, for example, um, say you're traveling to Japan, um, all the board signs are in Japanese, you don't know um, the contextual information, the cultural information, and if you could route those images to local crowdsourced humans, um, that can give you uh, very useful information. So travel and tourism industry is one of the other industries where this solution can be used. Um, there are other possibilities in the future where you want to find out how do I do something because we are leveraging the human intelligence. Humans have special abilities, and if we can take them um, cleverly, then we can route the images to people who should be answering questions. So what we are planning to do is um, add the, the voice recognition and natural language processing into the next stage so that you can ask a question, then take photos. We can stitch them together or stream it through, and the person can answer. Um, so there are many uh, possibilities around there, um, although we, the main problem we're trying to solve is the blind, and I think those technologies um, improvements would help blind people at the same time as well. Thank you. Uh, congratulations for your presentation, very impressive. Um, I have a question on the, for the mobile application. Why don't you leverage the, the power of the, the mobile device and trying to implement a recognition algorithm within the application? Uh, as, uh, as I understand, you upload each and every time the pictures uh, in the cloud. So why don't you use directly the phone in order to try to, for example, recognize the color of uh, something on the picture? Yes, so one of the reasons, and that's a very good question, uh, we considered that uh, initially because that gives us the benefit of not sending the image um, out, to the, out to the cloud if we can do that. Although what restricts us there is that if we can build the application really simple on the mobile devices and do all the complicated work on the server side, then we can reach out to many mobile platforms which are available out there. Um, what we started with is to use um, a Symbian operating system because while our trial with in New Zealand, we found out that most blind people use those phones today. And so we um, developed an app for that so they can start using it. Um, then we developed an app for Windows Phone 7 to demonstrate what we can do with the current smartphones and when blind people will start using the smartphones, how will we leverage that and use the latest technology to help them further. Um, currently, our application is so simple that it just sends an image, gets the voice response, plays it back. That means we can, if we want to develop it for other platforms, it's very easy for us. Um, so that's our first step. As a, as a step further, we can always um, implement it on the device, but that will require more develop, development hours. So that's the main reason, really, why we chose that. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Very impressive. Very clever. Um, you're compressing the images that are taken and pushing those up to the server for analysis. Um, is there a danger you might lose detail in those images so that the person looking at them can't make sense? Is there a way you, you can deal with that? So currently we resize it to 640 by 480 in JPEG format, which comes down to about 50 to 70 kilobytes per image, uh, which gives enough details, as we saw in our trial, um, to answer the questions. Although in some scenarios, sorry. So, yeah, so you're resampling, not compressing. So I was trying to think, how do you compress a JPEG? Because they don't get small. So you're resampling. Resizing, yeah. yes, okay, that's that, right. That makes sense. I mean, the other thing that occurs to me is you're talking about using voice response, so your system listens to what I'm saying, works out the words, and sends those to the server. If you're sending that number of bytes for the image, you might as well send a couple of K of a speech sample 
So rather than me actually having to have my voice decoded, which is very hard to do, you just record me asking the question. So you, you send my question as a piece of sound. What color is this jumper? And that just gets sent as a, as a, as a sound sample rather than a, uh, a, a bunch of words. You might find that's worth exploring because it wouldn't seem to add much to the cost of your data transfer. Yes, that's okay. right. Thank yeah, you. It's definitely worth it. Very nice solution. Thank you very much. Um, speaking of your trial, you had a number of users, testers of your system. Um, how many did you have for how long and what were the challenges that you faced and the solutions that you brought forward based on their input? Initially when we started out, that was about six months ago, and we created a rough prototype of, of our idea and we gave it to our blind friend and said, do you want to try it out? Um, that was very challenging because they had a hard time figuring out how to take photos and we kind of taught them um, that this is how you orient your camera, the, ro the rotation is more important than the placement, uh, things like that, uh, getting the distance right and, and not having the finger on the way and, and things like that. Um, and as they started using it, they started giving us feedback. Um, so initially we got about three or four users to start uh, using it and give us more feedback. Recently, we, re we ran a trial with the Foundation of the Blind uh, in New Zealand, uh, and then we had about 20 users um, with the helpers who are volunteers of the Foundation of the Blind. And what we found out there is we just, because it was across the country, uh, people from different cities and different parts of New Zealand were taking part, uh, we just gave them some guidelines of, of, of what we had learned from our past experiences. So just text guide of how to take photos, and they, of course, use screen reader on their laptop. So they, they understood that, tried a few photos, and then, um, then started learning. So they were taking really good photos. Thank you, guys. I have, Thank to, you. I have to end the time there. Well done. <laughs> so well done, Team New Zealand Mobile Eye. I love that you've created real meaning in social media and the cross-disciplinary um, nature of your team. Well done, and congratulations on getting it to the Thank top you. six. Thank um, you. And enjoy the rest of your afternoon.